basically what we are trying to do here is a kind of um, collab to show guys how we are working with Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, how we are using our um, devices. Uh, how many of you are already familiar with Zebra? So I know you're familiar with Zebra, right? No, something? But the other ones know Zebra does? See, okay. So basically we, we uh, made software and hardware, basically uh, we made hardware, uh, we have different lines of hardware, we, uh, we made printers, industrial printers, we made um, um, scanners, we made mobile computers, um, basically um, a mobile computer we are actually working um, mainly in Android, we used to work also in uh, Windows, but basically our, uh, after integration with, um, I don't know uh, if you know that, but um, we did a, uh, we buy uh, the Motorola solutions three years ago. So when we did the acquisition, this is a very nice acquisition because normally it's the big fish buying the small fish. But in this case, the small fish was buying the big fish. So in this particular case, uh, was a, for us was very, very important to do a very successful integration after three years. We have done a very good integration with uh, all of the um, Mot uh, Motorola solutions that we implement. During that integration, we have a uh, part what we have done is harmonize hardware. So we develop solutions, we develop uh, hardware, and we harmonize those develop, uh, creating um, SDKs so developers like you can implement those very easily. So I'm going to start to do a presentation. Basically, uh, my name is Manuel Caicedo. I work for uh, the ISB team. ISB, uh, ISB, everybody knows what is ISB, ISB Independent Software Vendor. So my uh, role there is basically help ISBs to implement our hardware and software into their applications. Um, I have been working with Zebra for uh, five years. I have a master's degree in software engineering. Um, basically, uh, my specialization is in Android and also in Java, working basically, those are my focus. Part of the team working in other areas. Um, so during the presentation, I'm gonna just, at the, in some points, I'm gonna stop to show the code, in some point, I'm gonna show the demo. Um, if you have any questions, please, uh, you can do it. Uh, and during those parts, we can get a little more time to advance into the presentation. So basically, what I was explained to you, uh, we work for Zebra. Um, normally, we cover, uh, 90 uh, basically 95% of the Fortune companies. So just even the, all of the uh, 19th companies like Amazon, uh, all of the technologies companies use our products in their uh, operations um, during that. So basically uh, we covered many different solutions. We covered um, all of the options that you see here. We covered cloud kernel solutions, location solutions, mobile computing, data capture, bar uh, barcode printing. This is all of the hardware that we cover, and basically all of the um, vertical that we cover. We cover retail, manufacturing, transportation, and logistics, and healthcare. So what are basically is the agenda that we want to cover today? We want to cover basically three points. We want to go through the basics, what Android have it done with, and Bluetooth, how they implement Bluetooth. Uh, some of them, or some of you already know this part. So we wanna just go quick, so that part after that, I wanna say how, what we did, how we did to improve that kind of part with our devices, peripherals and, and hardware using Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy. So the first part, just review the APIs. The second part is how we simplify the APIs uh, from the perspective that uh, Android did through Zebra perspective. The last part is just showing you how we implement those kind of solutions uh, uh, using our peripherals, so basically printers and um, vacants. So if you don't know, we, we work in locations. How many of you know that NFL guys, we track the NFL guys using our technology? Did you know that? No? All of the NFL is tracking with our technology. So any, any player has two vacants on both sides. Each stadium has a full implementation to capture that information. So we work with our URF to doing that kind of thing. So we develop for them the hardware, the implementation on the stadiums, and also all of the software to do the analytics of that. 
So basically, we want to see, just a basic implementation, we don't have time, just 40 minutes, so we want to just see a, a simple implementation with printers and bacons working as a peripherals. So the first thing that basically we did, comparing this through uh, the, the work that Android have done, is basically analyzing what the Bluetooth allows us developers to do. So basically, um, the most important thing that uh, developers can do with Bluetooth is, is scan devices, right? You can uh, uh, query look, uh, um, pair devices too, so after you scan it, you can save the devices, you can do that. Establish uh, connections with the devices and transmit data, so you can do that through the F FCOM channels. Um, also, you can transfer data from one device to other devices, um, manage multiple connections. The last part, as I explained to you, we want to use Bacon and Sebra printers to just to see how we optimize Bluetooth uh, Low Energy 4.1. Let's try to check one second both technologies, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy. So when we, we just start to work with Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, you decided to de first define the use cases. So each technology allows you to implement several use cases, but some of them work, work better for some use cases, other ones work better for other cases. Basically, what we are analyzing here is one of the use cases that normally you decided to work with Bluetooth standard is when you need to work in a range of 30 to 50 feet that allows you to connect those devices. When you're working with Bluetooth Low Energy, you need, uh, you need to work always um, less than uh, 50 feet to the device. So it's one of the um, limitations that Bluetooth Low Energy can do. Other thing that uh, allows Bluetooth standard is basically transmit high quantity of data. It was designed for intensity operations, but uh, initially it was designed to transmit high quantity of data into, uh, into what we call quantity of data that is related. But allows you to transmit more data than the Bluetooth uh, low energy. Um, one more thing, so again, when you decide uh, to work with Bluetooth, it's because you're working with mobile devices. So you're doing something with mobile devices. So it's basically battery operation devices. So when you're working with Bluetooth low energy, you're working basically with uh, very intensity uh, battery operations. The last part, Bluetooth, low, uh, Bluetooth standard allows you to control up to four or five levels of security. The, uh, against Bluetooth Low Energy, Bluetooth Low Energy don't allows you to control all those kind of securities, but it's because it's, uh, when you base, when you analyze that, it's because you're working basically with devices that you're connecting as a bacon, so no, like we say, it's more devices, more slave devices. So basically for IoT activity. Question here? No? Okay. So let's try to go through a brief review of the Android APIs. So <clears throat> the first thing that we want to check is um, uh, the Bluetooth permissions. So basically, those are the standard Bluetooth permissions. Everybody knows that. That after, after Android 6.0, everybody has started to see issues with Android connectivity. And uh, basically, with discovery. So the discovery option, uh, you need to activate the access code location in order to use discovery after Android 6.0. Um, and the last part is I just doing both things together, so the things that I, that are similar between Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy. I'm going to be focused more on Bluetooth standard. Bluetooth Low Energy is a little more extensive. We don't have time to cover that. But I just made some differentiation between both. So the second part that you see there is basically is you're working in Bluetooth Low Energy. And that was part of what I tried to mention at the beginning. You can identify is your device built to low energy doing, implement, doing that portion only. The second part, if you're working with Bluetooth, the first thing that you need to work is with Bluetooth adapter. Bluetooth adapter is basically the object in Android that identifies the Bluetooth connectivity, Bluetooth use. So you need to enable the Bluetooth adapter. Basically, you need to define first if your device supports Bluetooth. And after that, you, the second thing that you need to do is uh, enable the Bluetooth adapter uh, through that kind of portion of code. So basically, the, uh, the similarities in that portion is similar. Uh, mm, what you need to do is enable the request enable of Bluetooth in order to do that. Um, it's similar to the Bluetooth Low Energy. The second thing for uh, front, that's the only two things there are basically the same, uh, three things. Android Bluetooth permission, Bluetooth adapter, and enable Bluetooth. From there, Bluetooth 
and Bluetooth Low Energy has completely different implementations. Uh, Bluetooth Low Energy uh, has different, completely, uh, different stack than the Bluetooth standard. So based on that, uh, Android just made a lot of work just impl uh, de developing a lot, uh, some classes for Bluetooth Low Energy and other classes for Bluetooth. And that was the part that we uh, did in our company to homologate, the, uh, to standardize those kind of things. You will see those things later. Uh, okay, so just going to Bluetooth Low Energy, uh, sorry, the Bluetooth standard, you need basically, in order to do the discovery part, you need to create uh, basically a broadcast. Everybody have been working with broadcast here, but you need that. You need to implement the Bluetooth device action found in order to find the devices around you. Uh, basically, you need to register and unregister the broadcast. That's basically the option that you need to do. After, uh, this is basically how you implement the broadcast receiver. Uh, normally, uh, it's into the broadcast receiver. Normally, you need to register the broadcast in your onCreate met uh, method. So you need to put that into the onCreate method. Um, how that works, basically, uh, just do, uh, is your device has to be enabled uh, or, um, and also be able to be found. So you, uh, when you do the discovery, that's the action that uh, the state that uh, Android devices will recognize that your uh, device was found. Once you have a device uh, found, the, the Bluetooth device do a communication, a basic communication, and you will connect in the devices together, and you will get in just two, informa two basic information. Basically, you can get the, uh, uh, get, uh, you get the name of the device and the address of the device doing the discovery. We are talking about the discovery. So you save that information uh, into your application, and after that, you will be selecting the MAC address to do the connectivity to the specific device. OK, there are two options to connect the devices, uh, connecting as a client and connecting as, as a server. So when you're connecting as a server, basically you are uh, making uh, able the device to open the connections. When you're working with a client or as a client, it's because you are seeing a server sending you or, or, or a device open to receive connections. Normally, when you're working with mobile computers, you're working as a client. So vacants or other devices like the printers working as a server. So they are open to receive communications. So it's one of the, 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 the portions that we analyze here. So in our particular case, because we are developers, we are developing the, of the, side, uh, the side of the client, so we'll be need, we will be needing this kind of um, development. So what Android recommends, basically, they recommend to put this in a, in a thread to make the connection. You need to create a, a temporary uh, block, uh, Bluetooth socket connection. Into the block, uh, block socket connection, you will, create, you will use this um, this uh, method of the device that will create the channel to open the communication with the, with the Bluetooth uh, device, who is, uh, who is uh, um, sending the um, signal to see that it's open to open the communication. So that's the part, the first part of the code. I have just explained the code in several parts. So uh, don't forget to co always close the uh, client socket once you have it finished. That's part of the final part of the implementation. So when you finish with the communication, just you need to close the socket. Otherwise, you will have some issues trying to reopen or to reconnect the device. So it's always recommended every time that you do that, close the connection. And, uh, uh, and we have seen that many times with, when we do the connection with our printers and we are our device, so always uh, we try to talk to the developers, make the close the connection. Could be, sounds supposed to be Andro uh, Android is based in Java, and uh, th that doesn't mean, like I am the Java developer, that doesn't mean against, the, for example, C Sharp or C++, they tell you exactly that any object uh, or pointer that you open, you need to close that. So you assume in Java you don't need to do that, but you need it when you're working with sockets or when you're working with devices and objects, you need to close those connections. Okay, basically, what you need to do is because you're working, when we say, when you open the connection, you're working as a final. So at that particular moment, you need to define the variables as a final. So that was the reason because when you were looking for the device, open the connection, you create a temporary connection, and after that, the, the connection is created, you convert that to final. 
So basically, here is how the implementation works. So uh, you remember the first part, the, uh, we have two options here. We have the socket, the input stream, if you want to receive data, upstream, if you want to send data. Uh, the implementation is very uh, simple. You create the uh, temporary uh, 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 input strip to receive the data. You create an exception, IOE exception for uh, um, interface communications. Uh, you receive the data. If you have any problem receiving the data, you will get that there. Through the debugging, you will see those kind of things. Part of the question that you asked me at the beginning. If you create that kind of exception and you can follow that debugging, you will be able to see this creating the problem after the communication is created, is capturing that error or that exception, receiving the data or sending the data. One of two could be happening. Yeah? So either one of those, you will have uh, two different options to communicate with those devices. And basically here is just the routine to write to the a device. It's very simple to implement. Uh, you need to implement a handler to create that. You need to send a message and let's wait for the message from the device. Once the device, uh, the message from the device have received, you will be able, you will know at that moment if you are able to keep the communication or close the communication. Normally, when the, uh, the initial communication is not accepted for the mobile uh, device or the icon of the slate device, the, uh, uh, immediately the communication will be closed. And that happens through a message. So you have some issues during that process. Uh, the message will tell you what happened at that moment. Basically, here you need to use, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, here, basically, you need to use a buffer. Uh, in the buffer, you will create your data that you need to transmit to the device. And basically, just using the, uh, the, the information through the main, uh, mainstream outstream. So you're sending the uh, information through the buffer using uh, that portion. So that is what Android have done for Bluetooth. So it's very easy, nothing new there, right? When comes the issues, right? When the issues coming through us? So here, you see on the left, is basically what our developers in Sierra have done to simplify the uh, Android developers' work. So there are basically two main actions that you will be doing with um, Bluetooth devices. One option is discovery of those devices in your environment, close to you, basically, this part what normally you do. You have two ways to do it. If you know the Bluetooth, just basically you work directly with the Bluetooth and you just take out the discovery portion of that. But we are assuming that we need discovery. So in this discovery, you need to implement some part of the uh, implementations to find the device that was discovered, to say that the device that was discovered and to implement that uh, selection when the device was discovered. So we create basically three options to keep that information easily. We saw those kind of particularities against the standard uh, discovery. In discovery, normally you use uh, an activity to device and scan device through the um, broadcaster or, or through, uh, yes, basically the broadcaster, basically talking about the Bluetooth standard on the, left, uh, the right side. So use the broadcaster receiver. Uh, normally, you need to de define an Intel filter, um, basically what we saw before, register and register receiver. For the communication, basically, you have three uh, main um, classes. So the Bluetooth adapter, basically, that's the most important one. The second one is the Bluetooth device. So this uh, is basically the object that you save of the device that you try to use for the communication. And the Bluetooth socket, basically, to create the, the, the channel uh, and to send the data, receive the data between both devices. So that is Bluetooth. This is Bluetooth Low Energy. So in Bluetooth Low Energy, because we are using a completely different stack for Bluetooth Low Energy, Bluetooth have it implement all of those uh, classes. So when you're working with Bluetooth Low Energy, it's simpler because you're working with slate devices, but it's more complicated to do a very simple application. Yeah. So what our developers did is, if you see in communication, we just capture both things and simplify those in three basic um, um, classes. So the Bluetooth connection, that's basically 
who take care of the connection with the Bluetooth device. Uh, the connection itself, when we talk about the connection itself, for us is an interface. What it basically means, uh, normally you connect a device, in our cases, we connect the device through Bluetooth, through Bluetooth Low Energy, through Wi-Fi, through USB. So all of, that's the reason because our connection is interface. Yeah, so allows you to connect or any kind of those com uh, different objects of communication. Once the communication have been implemented, uh, have been uh, done, you uh, start just to do the connection. In the, our case, you define the Bluetooth connection as the main object. So, for example, in our case, if you have a, a TCP, uh, you have a TCP connection, you have an object for TCP connection. So you do the discovery in TCP, capture the TCP connection goes to the connection, that is an interface, and after that, you uh, start to work with the Zebra printer that will be something like the Bluetooth device in Android. In our case, the Zebra printer could be a bacon, but the Zebra printer will be the object that we take of the device that we, uh, we use. It's because I want to explain to you in the next slide what that means. Any questions here? No? Everybody familiar with those classes, right? How many of you have been working in Bluetooth Low Energy now? How many of you have issues with Bluetooth Low Energy? <laughs> OK, that makes me feel better. Good. OK, so yes, so you can see what uh, one of the reasons is why uh, many people have issues with Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, OK, so what basically we did that, or what basically we do our, this work for developers. So basically, those are what we think are the five reasons for us to develop the SDKs for, uh, our, uh, for Android developers or for enterprise developers. The first thing, our SDK is based in uh, customer needs. So that's the reason because you see here, see with a printer class. Yeah? You know that you're working with printers, so you will have your classes for, for see with a printer. And all of that is designed because portion of the communication in Bluetooth has to be developed in the other side of the peripheral. So um, in, in normal in companies like us, uh, you need to, uh, that's what we say, harmonize hardware. Um, the way that works one device against the other device doesn't mean that both devices will communicate and will be do, doing that very easily, no. In our cases, uh, we need to harmonize that kind of communication, uh, making, the, um, which making some devices working as a servant work, and making other devices working as a slave or working as a client. So that is transparent to the, to the developer, because the developer basically, what we'll see is the, the SDK with the options that they need to do the, uh, the implementation very easily. So again, so that is one of the reasons, customer base. We try to solve the, solver, uh, the customer needs, and into those customer needs, we define basically what kind of classes needs to be done in the uh, uh, customer side or the developer side to make those kind of things easier. The second thing, we resolve com process complex tasks. If you see here, basically, on communication, uh, we have a simplified. All of those classes, even uh, if you compare that with through Bluetooth, could be uh, the initial approach. But as you see the communication in, in Bluetooth Low Energy, you have, uh, I don't know, more, about 10 classes to do a simple connection or to send simple data. If you see in Zebra, we just have it reduced uh, all of that complexity to basically three classes. Three classes. So could, you see that easier, but our developers spend almost than six months trying to do that. Because remember, our communication, our connection, sorry, our connection class is an interface. So means that any device and any type of connectivity has to work in the same way. Even behind of that, there's no the reality. So what kind? So we resolve the communication Android classes. We resolve latency connections. We uh, resolve the issue with filtering devices. We also uh, implement additional security options. Uh, faster implementation. So as you see, yes, we re the, part of the made the implementation faster is to reduce those classes to very uh, optimized number of enumerators, interfaces, and classes. The last thing, or the most important that every company does. Technology adoption, right? So why we say technology adoption? Technology adoption because uh, basically we, we create those devices. This is new. This is no, even you see here, this one, this is no even launched to the market. I try just to show you here. 
It's not launched to the market yet. And it's our device, it's new, doing testing at that moment to verify that everything is working fine. So this, this device basically works in uh, Link OS. Link OS is the technology that we invented. So basically it's operating system to uh, um, work with all of those devices. So either this device, any kind of printer in Sibira, whatever you see in Sibira, is a printer using the operating system. Could be this small, a small one, or the biggest uh, industrial ones that, uh, like uh, Apple, um, General Motors, everybody using the manufacturing side. So any of those devices use the same operating system. We develop the operating system. It's a Link OS operating system. And that is the, the, uh, the adoption of technology that, as a developer, we are creating for developers. The second team, we are integrating different interfaces with the devices or different technologies into the devices. So the hardware, basically, we are working here with Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth Standard. And also, we have a Wi-Fi. We have uh, NFC. So our devices support NFC, too. And also, we are supporting RFID. So all of those technologies um, makes a little difficult for developers to work with. So that's another reason why we need to develop a specific SDKs for developers and solve those kind of things. The third one, communications improve it. Um, Bluetooth standards support 279 channels. Um, Bluetooth low energy support 40 channels of communication. We don't, know, we don't need all of them. Basically, we are using only two channels. One channel to start to check, and one channel for uh, communication, so for send and receive data. Yeah? Um, so that's basically an optimization because normally you don't need to st spend time trying to uh, uh, try to uh, how can I say this um, uh, uh, cover all of the bandwidth with other channels. Just you know that you need two channels, so you can uh, expand the one, your bandwidth using only those two channels. So that is one of the reasons that you optimize communications. Um, one more th uh, another important thing, when you work with the Bluetooth communication, we improve the um, communication. So the communication between both sides, again, uh, when you're working with those devices or hardware, we need to harmonize who will be working as a server, who will be working as a client. So that allows us to implement and um, improve our bi-directional communication. One of the parts that normally we offer and differentiate for the competitors, lose no, uh, but allows us to tell the customers that we allow by directional communication. So you can capture a lot of data from our devices. And you can now, you know that we are in the uh, analytics stage now of the moment. So basically, whatever you're doing with analytics or with data, with data, is important for the companies because that uh, helps uh, make our decisions, or the decision maker, sorry, to, to, make, um, to make better decisions. So whatever you're doing now, you need to think in big data and how you provide the big data. So all of those devices that you're working provide that big data. So that's part of what for us is very important to have bidirectional communication. The last part, maybe one of the most important things, and that's the reason because we are here. Uh, there are dedicated teams to support the SDKs, uh, to provide uh, custom, uh, to capture uh, customer requirements, to hear uh, voice of the customer. Um, also to implement best practices and to provide uh, channels for developers to do those work very easily. So we have several best practices document. I recommend to you the, the presentation team will be uh, posted in some moment later. So you have two links there. You can go to best practices printing apps. And what we are doing there is telling to um, developers how is the best way to implement the, those kind of uh, applications to make the things easier for, for you guys. We have a several developer portal. We take all of the information from you guys, everything that is not working, capturing uh, error cases, um, and providing online support through posts or conference uh, guys like us, providing you uh, um, on real on time response, maybe. But unless we capture the information from you guys to get that information. So basically, those are the main five reasons why companies like us develop those SDKs. So now, what we do with the SDKs. So basically, that is the, one of the standard use cases that you will face in the, in the market. So 
printing a dynamic receipt. So this is basically a one, could be many different use cases, but this is just one case, that's the way normally we work, and we teach developers how to work and very, uh, uh, facilitate the work for the uh, implementation of the application. So in this particular case, we have devices, what kind of communication you can implement, formatting language, formatting languages, are you not familiar with that? CPL is the language that normally we create to communicate with our devices, or in this particular case, with our printers. So which platform are you working Android and what, how you will transfer, uh, transfer in that data? So basically here, in your, on your right side, that's the code that I'm gonna share. Somebody want the code, I can share the code for you guys. So basically, uh, it's a simple application how I will implement all of those steps. So the discover and connect is basically, uh, let me just, I'm gonna do the demo later uh, after this presentation, after this slide. Basically what you do is discover printers, all of the process that you do during the communication. You do this code process, select and connect the device, and save the, save the printer profile in application. This is a standard process that everybody that's working with Bluetooth is doing. When you work with NFC, you can save and reduce those steps to one. That's one of the advantages to use uh, the uh, NFC. Well, okay, advantage and disadvantage, because normally when you work with the uh, NFC, you need to touch your devices or very close devices. When you do that discovery, it's because you have a that if it's around devices that you need to find and connect them. Yeah, after that you do the setting and formatting. Basically, depending on the devices, we have multiple devices, so we have a multiple uh, uh, printer language, so you need to select the right language. And after that you start to do the, uh, the process of the application. Uh, and after that, yes, you do the, so remember, you did the communication on the top part, but you basically, no transfer, you are not transferring data at that moment, just you're capturing the MAC address of the device. So the moment on the bottom part is where you're doing the, transfer, the transferring uh, data. So you open the communication again uh, and send the data to the device. When you're working with, and this is a nice thing to show you how we work with this, when you're working with, um, with Bluetooth, low, Bluetooth standard, uh, we normally, you can transfer image to the printer in Bluetooth, but you cannot do it, well, you can do it. So you can do the same thing in Bluetooth Low Energy, but the differentiation in time is almost, so in, in, in Bluetooth standard, normally you spend uh, one second to send the data to the device. When you're sending the same image to the printer in Bluetooth Low Energy, normally you spend about eight to 10 seconds. Because uh, you, uh, everybody knows that Bluetooth Low Energy transmit very few packets of data uh, many times, so the same data the difference is the type of the package. So in one package, you're sending all of the data in Bluetooth standard against, uh, I don't know, uh, 10, 20 packets in Bluetooth Low Energy sending the same data. So that is one of the differences to work in Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, and how, or how we uh, solve that issue using templates. So basically, our printers can save all of the template information into the printer. So what we are doing is sending only, only the dynamic data. So when you say the dynamic data, you are optimizing the Bluetooth connectivity. So I ways, there are ways to optimize that. So when you, for example, again, so you're sending to a device the same data multiple times, so that data can be safe on the device if your device allows to do that. So that's in Bluetooth. In Bluetooth uh, because the printer doesn't, doesn't matter if it's Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy. So they save the, the, the information here. But in Bluetooth Low Energy, you're sending only the small quantity of data, so small uh, streams or uh, bits that the printer will uh, react very immediately, so you don't need to send um, uh, all of the image that you were sending previously, because you saved the image in the printer before. So that's basically the way that we do, status check, just to verify that the work that you were doing was su uh, successfully done. And that's the last part is just close the connection. Even you need to close the connection with our devices, always, you, need, you never do or you never uh, keep a connection open because you're working with mobile, comp mobile devices. Mobile devices means you're working with batteries. So you, you leave a connection open, uh, Bluetooth has that kind of problem that consumes a lot of uh, energy of your battery. So normally when you close the, the Bluetooth, that helps you to save energy a lot. So that's one of the reasons because the Bluetooth Low Energy was created, to save 
uh, the consumption of, of the communication in, in, in Bluetooth communications. Our architecture is DK based. What is covering everything here? We have basically uh, implementing printing discovery, connectivity, phone conversion, graphic conversion, all of that. All of that information is available on the right side. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a short demo. Let me see if I can do it. So, okay, so let's see if this, this demo works. So you want the code, let me know. I have, my, I have my USB memory here so everybody can take the code. So basically what we are doing is implementing the concept that we have seen here. The first thing that we want to do is discover the printer. So here you, you're seeing is this, uh, all of the Bluetooth devices that are around this area. Uh, at this moment, I know which is my printer. So I'm gonna look for my printer here. Wow, so many devices here. And I'm gonna look again, see again. Okay, so I found it. So it's my the third one is my uh, mobile comp uh, my mobile printer. So I'm gonna start the process. I select the I did the discover. I select the printer. I'm gonna pair the printer. So it's printed, the printer is printing at this moment. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is now send some data to the printer. I'm gonna create, so I'm just basically doing a, this is an example of how you can create your own uh, print receipt application. It's very nice that you don't need to sign in paper. You can sign on the application and you send to print. Let's see if that works. So, very simple implementation how that works. And uh, as you see here, but all of this, what you have seen here, I'm gonna just pass the information here, has, a, has data, uh, um, dynamic data, uh, logo, image, whatever you can see, even a barcode scanner, whatever you need to do an implementation. So everybody needs the application, how we did that is basically, let me know, I can share with you guys the the uh, demo, so you can do that on your own. So let's go back to the presentation. So the, this is basically in doing, so somebody sending data? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, very nice logo. <laughs> okay, so that is one of the reasons why you need to implement security connectivity <laughs> to avoid those kind of things. <laughs> right? So let's block the USB connector. Uh, uh, uh. 
jual kan? <laughs> Somebody send me the idea. Okay, nice. Okay, good. So that means everybody is connected to the the point we are making here. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so do you see it there? It's basically a simple implementation. Our device. And uh, everything that you saw in that demo is done with this SDK, all of that kind of implementation done. We have a very sample, uh, we have uh, a lot of sample code demos and documentation that you can take for that from our those links. So uh, at the moment that you have the, the presentation available for you, you can go to those links and take that information. Okay, basically here is how we simplify all of the process just with that portion of code. So what you're doing is, is you, on the top part, basically you have two classes. The connection, the connection is basically the interface, and the Segura printer, that's the object of the printer itself. Yeah? So we are emulating all of the functionality of, uh, of the printer with the object Segura printer. So basically what you do is, first of all, get the connection with the Bluetooth device. So you get the MAC address uh, after the discovery function. Uh, then the, the next thing that you, go, you do is open the connection. And after the device is connected, or uh, the, the socket is open at that moment, you start to, uh, uh, the first thing that you do is capture the object of that device. So at that moment, you are capturing all of the profile of that device into the, uh, into the uh, application and save it in printer. What you do after that is basically set up the device to CPL language, uh, form uh, store the format, the format that you're using just to optimize the communication in Bluetooth. And the next thing is, uh, before to do the communication normally, because we are using smart devices, you need to talk to the device and ask the device is ready to do the, what we want to do with that device. So in our case, what we want to do with that device is print. So we want to ask, is you ready to print? So the device will tell you yes or no. So as the, print, the device is telling you, I am ready for printing. So after that, you will do the printing portion of that. So you will print the format, and after that, you will control in the device is doing what you told them to do it. So you will have a successful check at the end to see if the printer did that. After all that process, you close the connection and disconnect the device. Simple implementation, and all of the process that you saw is done in this particular slide. So how we optimize the use with the Bluetooth low serial peripheral device? So our printer. As I, uh, as I told you, let me see if I can show you that here. Ah. Let me see if I can do it that here again. How many? Well, okay. Let's go to this quickly. I don't have much time. So let's try to do this. So in our uh, offering, we have different kind of things. So we have mobile computers in Bluetooth Low Energy. All of those devices that you see on the left is mobile computers that we have in Bluetooth Blue Low Energy. On the right side, we have the peripherals. So we have printers and peripherals. And we have bacons on the bottom. So every time that you remember now this presentation, you remember that we, will have with, uh, we work with locations, solutions, so we work with bacons. So we implement those bacons in many different places. In addition to the NFL, we work with the retail stores. So everything that you're doing, or when you go to the retail store, what you're feeling now, or you're doing uh, now, is basically approaching to those, uh, to those things on, on, on the stores with those bacons. They will let, uh, let you know who you are, what you're doing there, and they will recommend to you specific kind of things to buy, or at least to identify your customer behaviors. So even if you're not buying something, or you buy something, or the, the device is not telling you what to do, the company is taking that information just to define your uh, customer behaviors, and that allows later to the company make better decisions. So here I have another demo. That's basically working in Bluetooth Low Energy. Let's see if that works.
Okay. So basically here, you're using your printer as a bacon. So basically, it's working as a location solution. So uh, this is working in Bluetooth low energy. So you're using RFID, uh, uh, basically works as a, a Wi-Fi. So you know the Wi-Fi uh, controls the intensity of the signal depending where you're located. So the same thing works uh, uh, with Bluetooth low energy. So if you're close to the device, the, the, the matrix of the intensity of the signal is stronger and that against when you're far away from the device. So that allows you to uh, do many different things with those Bluetooth devices. So in this particular demo, what we did is basically do implementation as when you're approaching to the device, uh, and that makes sense with the part that I was mentioned to you before, uh, is identifying who is close to you and basically implements the, uh, connect to that device, get information, or send some information to that device. Yeah, so is it a body, if somebody wants to, uh, wants to have the code for this, let me know. We have the sample code too. This is another demo that we have for Bluetooth Low Energy. So let's try to go to the end. So we have another, so that's basically how we did the implementation with Bluetooth Low Energy. This is part of the sample code. The permissions are basically the same permissions, just you are adding the fine location to here. Uh, normally, it's required to work with API uh, 23, so uh, that's the, uh, the API 23 version that we are using for this demo. Uh, basically, uh, what you're doing here is taking the uh, APK from our Bluetooth uh, uh, SDKs. So, two things. For Bluetooth uh, standard, we have one API, and uh, uh, for uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, we have another uh, API. The same classes but one for, AP, uh, for Bluetooth standard and the other one for Bluetooth low energy. In uh, here, basically, how you can work with the callback part and making the implementation of the printers as a bacon. On the left side, it's just a sample code that we did just to make this work. Here, basically, what I explained to you before, how the uh, proximity to the device works and how you implement that in Bluetooth. So, the same thing that you saw on the video, short video that we show, how you are uh, connecting the device and through Bluetooth Low Energy, detecting the device through uh, basically uh, location portion of that device. So you're using here the NRC capability to do that. Again, here after, so there are two processes here. That is a nice thing to do. So basically what we did here is two things. So we were in Bluetooth Low Energy to define the location of the device. And after we moved to Bluetooth standard to send the data. So we did that conversion on the fly. So the, the user didn't see anything, just it's implemented with the code. So here we are open the connection, sending the data, and printing the information on the printer. That's the other components that we have for MPAT. MPAT is all of this technology that we have here. So those are the bacons that you don't see on retail store, but those are, those are right there, taking your information from your Bluetooth devices like the guy who is playing with my printer there. <laughs> okay, so that is basically what we do, network access. Uh, all of those parts are the components of the uh, SDK for that portion. Here on the left is basically a standard architecture that normally is implemented when you're working with um, bacons. This is the code, the basic code that you do. We have sample code and we have some demos that you can download from our website to do this implementation. You, everything is ready for you, how you can implement it, how to do that. That's the other part we wanna mention, uh, our NFC, de uh, NFC devices. So you can, as I explained to you before, you can do uh, all of our devices, most of our devices come with the NFC tag here. So you, uh, you can do quickly connections and transmit data through that very easily through this new technology that basically you're seeing on the screen is what the tag has and how you can work with that. So uh, how many of you have been working with NFC? No, nobody? Nobody have been working with NFC yet? Really? Okay. So basically our printer has a tag, RFID tag there. Uh, it's a passive RFID tag. You normally when you're working in RFID, you have two ways to work in RFID. For example, again, coming back to the case in uh, the, the, our, uh, the NFL, is uh, NFL works uh, with a different uh, RFID. It says active RFID. Or, uh, so you're, uh, the, the, the players are sending the signal 
to the collectors. Yeah, in this particular case, this is a RFID passive, so you're capturing the information from the server who's sending the signal to that. And that's basically what it is into the device, how you capture the information, and basically what you do is approach your device, capture the string, and capture the MAC address, that's the second line. And after you capture the, MAC, the, the, the address, the MAC address, you can implement your connectivity the same way that was done before in Bluetooth. And that's it.